Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Derek.com and today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, I don't really care what day it is for you right now, but uh, it's Friday. It's Furniture Friday. And today we're going to be taking a look at the pendulum lamp designed by Matej Stefanac. Hey, so my name is pronounced Matej Stefanac. It's a really beautiful design and it has a smart balancing tilt feature that allows you to uh, rotate the lamp for either uh, an ambient mood type scenario or more focused lighting for reading or something like that. But yeah, check his work out online. I'll have a link in the description to see some more of his very brilliant designs. Uh, but yeah, with the pendulum lamp, lots of really nice and easy to understand shapes here. So I thought it would be a good lesson into some basic modeling and then of course lighting and so that we can show that tilt feature doing a little bit of animation as well. Uh, we're also going to make that little piece of art in the background with some very simple processes. So stick around and let's jump into it. All right, so I'm in a pretty basic default blender scene here. If you saw my last video, you'll get the joke there. But what I want to do is go ahead and bring in our reference image that's going to give us just a little bit of an idea of the shape and the dimensions of our lamp. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to delete this default cube and then press shift A, add an image, and that'll be a reference image. Um, then you just need to navigate to wherever you've got that saved. If you have, I'll, uh, I'll try to put a link to Mate's website where you can download this yourself. But this is the reference image we're going to use. It'll come in at a little bit of an odd angle, and that's just the angle we were looking at, but we can fix that by just pressing Alt-R to reset the rotation. Uh, and I'm going to type RX90 just to bring it up. And yes, so now we're looking straight ahead at it. And what I like to do first when I've got dimensions like this is just build out a little box, uh, which could have been our default cube. I, I was not thinking ahead. Could have used that there, but adding back in a cube and uh, we're going to use this to kind of map out these dimensions so that we can be working to scale here. Now over here in this tab in the units, um, I'll actually leave it in metric, even though I'm here in America where we do a lot of things in inches and feet, uh, we will stay true to the metric system here. Uh, one thing I might do though, well, let's just go ahead and tab into edit mode. Um, so we know we need a box that's 34 centimeters high and 24 centimeters deep and wide. Um, so if we tab into edit mode and then I'm gonna press Q to bring up my quick favorites, which I have the edge length on there. If you watched the last video, you'll see that I have that as a quick favorite. If you don't, it's just right here, this edge length option over here in the viewport overlays. Uh, so this is two meters high, but I'm gonna work in centimeters. So 200 centimeters, uh, which is way too big. And rather than scaling this down super small, what I'm gonna do is just change my unit scale to 0.1. So that now our box here is just 20 centimeters. Um, so I'm going to bring this up just so that it's sitting right on the X axis. And so that I can see that a little bit better, let's go into this image, turn on some opacity and just bring that down a little bit. Okay. So right now we're 20 centimeters high. We need to be 34 centimeters high. So let's press G and Z and then just bring that up to 34. And then yes, it's already at 20 wide, which I think the base is 20 centimeters wide, but let's go ahead and S X bring this out until it's right at 24 centimeters. So now that we know um, this has the proper dimensions, we can just bring our reference image up here and just kind of scale it until it aligns. Uh, now, one thing that I found was that I believe the 34 centimeter height is not to this very top point, but instead it's to the, it's sort of to the um, top of the lamp shade itself. Um, and when you're working with a reference image like that, you might end up finding some discrepancies, but uh, we're taking the diameter of the shade as a, as a more likely accurate dimension. So just kind of moving this into place until it's scaled right. And I think that's going to be close enough for us, you know, close enough to the real scale. So that's all good. Let's go ahead and so that I don't accidentally move that reference image, I'm going to enable the ability to toggle selection here. So just going to check that off so that I can't select it. Um, and then this box, we'll just rename that sizer. We don't really need it anymore. So I'm going to press M and move it to a new collection, which I like to call the trash collection. And then I'll just disable that collection. So to get started, the first thing I want to do is add in this base object. And the way I'm going to do that is just by adding in a circle. And when that comes in, you'll have this little window pop up down here. Uh, 32 vertices is good. But I, I know that the base from the dimensions on the website is 20 centimeters in diameter. So uh, for the radius here, I can just type 10 
that is half of 20. And we can see nicely that that is aligning with what our drawing indicates. Always good to see consistency with things like that. And uh, because this big, huge grid annoys me, I'm going to change the uh, grid scale down to 0.1 as well. Uh, we can turn off our edge length here. I'm just going to press F to fill this in so that we just have a flat face there. And then I'm going to add in a solidify modifier just so that we can be working as procedurally as possible and give that a little bit of thickness. Now in the drawing, it looks quite a bit thicker, but I believe from both the photos uh, he sent me and the updated version of the lamp, which we are actually going to be building a semi-updated version of the lamp. Matei sent me uh, some updated renders of some design changes that happened. So we're going to model with those so that the lamp is a little bit more accurate to what the production model will be. Anyways, that's a good thickness there. I'm going to just go ahead and right click to shade that smooth and then turn on my auto smooth, which again is a quick favorite that can be accessed down here. Those are the only two quick favorites I have, the edge length and the auto smooth. And you can see why, because I've already used both of them. So let's say you're getting into some 3D art or maybe even real world art or maybe even printing your 3D art so it is in the real world art. Whichever it may be, you can do it all on a website created with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it super easy to build a website and do a ton with it. From a simple gallery page to show off your latest renders, to creating an online store, or even connecting some extensions to set up printing on demand, you can start making money off your work in no time. Setting up a site is super easy with a range of ready to use templates that are gorgeous right from the start. Don't wait any longer to get your work out there and set up a website with Squarespace today. Head on over to squarespace.com slash Dirk to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So that looks good for the base. Let's go ahead and add in a, another circle that will be our column. Um, now we can just leave that at 32. Realistically, it doesn't need to be quite so detailed because that's gonna be pretty small, but that's all right. So tabbing into edit mode here, I think that this whole column is about one centimeter in diameter, um, which one way I can, when I'm doing circles like this one time, some, something that I'll do is uh, make a face there, turn on my edge length, and then I can kind of see the diameter that way. So let's just bring that down to one centimeter. I'll turn off my edge length, get rid of this um, edge here, X edges and then back in my vertex select, which I'm switching between vertex, edge, and face by pressing one, two, and three on my number pad, but those options are also up here. Um, so with that at the proper diameter, um, I might just bring this object up a little bit so it's kind of sitting on top of our base, and then I'm just gonna press E and Z, and then bring that all the way up to about right there, I think is about where it, where it goes, maybe a tad, yeah, something, something like that. Uh, so this is actually a separate piece because this rotates. Um, this column at the top will create later. So let's go ahead and just fill in the top of that face. And then we can shade this smooth and use our auto smooth option there as well. Now, what should we do next? We've got this kind of um, counterweight piece. And there's also the shade. Let's just, while we're working with circles, might as well shift D on this one. Let's bring it up to about right there. And then in edit mode, I'm gonna press R and X, and then holding control till I see that that's at 90 degrees. And then I'm just gonna scale this down to the proper size, something like that. Looks pretty good to me. And um, one reason we duplicate it from this object is it's already got the solidify modifier on it. So we can just give that a little extra thickness. I think that's actually also about one centimeter thick, so we'll do that. And while we're in here, let's go ahead and add in a bevel modifier, just so that we're not working with any super sharp edges. Um, so just adding a few segments in there and then kind of bringing that bevel up a little bit. I think that that looks pretty good. Um, now, when you have the auto smooth option on and there's only three segments, each segment is 30 degrees. Um, so you could either you know raise this threshold or add in another segment. Um, but I think that that's a, whichever way you do it is all good as long as it's looking the way you like. So that's cool. And when you do have the bevel, that's basically creating edge loops. So you could actually go in and add a subdivision surface if you wanted to, so that when it actually renders, it's quite a bit more um, detailed and end round. Um, so that looks pretty good. Um, on the solidify modifier though, I might change this offset just down to zero so that it's going out from the middle rather than a certain direction. And then let's just go ahead and move this over a little bit. So GY, 
um, just so it's kind of sitting next to our column, which is how it looks in the actual uh, object. Can't see it here, but from those reference photos, we can tell that that is a little bit offset, and obviously it wouldn't be intersecting, but let's go ahead and uh, I guess just another circle. Should we just like take this circle? Let's just add a fresh circle. We don't want that circle to feel overused. Um, now this is the shade, which we know is 24 centimeters, so I can just pop the radius on this up to 12 if I want it to be super accurate. And then let's bring this up on the z-axis to right around there, and then tapping into edit mode, let's bring this down a little bit, and then let's bring this up a little bit, something like that. And we're just gonna kind of follow the loose shape here and we are going to want to smooth that out with a subdivision surface modifier so let's go ahead and add that we can even change our viewport level to two as well now i think there's a little bit of a return on the curve here so it starts to kind of come back in so i'm just going to scale that one down to mimic that and then just kind of i'm um, pressing g twice to edge slide and just sort of trying to get our shape accurate here um, now you know something like this would be very hard to get perfect without um, you know, some really good reference images, and this is a little bit pixelated, but I think we can get it pretty close. Um, so now Alt-Z to go into my X-ray mode. I'm just going to ex extrude that in and then move it down a little bit. And we're just going to kind of create that inner curve. So EZ, S, bring it in, EZ, uh, just till it's somewhere, somewhere about like that. Um, now this part I did notice in the model reference he sent me, is a little bit kind of like it's kind of like straight right there on that portion and I actually want to scale that whole thing in a little bit so let's select all these and then um, instead of just pressing S to scale it in I want to keep my height so I'm going to press S and shift Z so that'll scale on all axes except axes except for the Z axis um, so that that's working the way I want and I think we're in pretty good shape here looks like we need to maybe move this curve up a little bit and you know just checking the Checking the look of it there, maybe we want this to be smoothed out just a tad. I think something like that works pretty good. Again, kind of eyeballing it here, but I think that that's pretty close. So we have now our shade, which we can shade smooth, and then I'll add in a solidify modifier to that. Turn on my auto smooth option. Thickness is probably pretty good on that. I think that's relatively accurate. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is add in the actual like pivoting point and I'm going to add that in with a UV sphere so shift a mesh UV sphere it's going to come in down there where my cursor was let's just bring that up to about right there and then in edit mode I'm going to scale that down just until it's about the right size I think something like that is going to be just fine now for this UV sphere I'm going to delete the top half of it because it's really just this bottom portion um, and then this actually comes up a little bit, so there's like a straight section on that. And then we can press uh, F to fill that in. So we've got kind of our, our piece there. Now, there is a cutout in this piece where the whole thing rotates. And I think we can actually get rid of our reference image, at least for a second here. So I'm going to select that and move it into my trash collection. Uh, we can bring that back in a little bit if we need to. Um, like for that, maybe for that top piece, we'll need to have that. But... With that out of the way, it's a little bit easier to see that um, this, this part right here. So I'm going to press Shift A and add in a circle. And we're going to use this circle to sort of cut into this object right here. So let's just tab into edit mode, bring that down. Uh, let's bring this up on the z-axis and then R, Y, 90. And then just looking in our side view here, this is going to be a, an object we use to cut into that UV sphere. So this just needs to be a little bit bigger than our column. So I think something like that is gonna be fine. And then I'm going to delete the bottom half of this circle, X, and then with all those selected, press F to fill it in. And I'm gonna press E and Z, and just bring that back down a little bit. Um, and then to give this some thickness so that we can actually use it as a cutting object, I'm gonna add in a solidify modifier. And then we can have that be the zero offset. So it's going from the center. And it just needs to be big enough that it can cut into that object right there. So to actually add in that Boolean, we're going to add in a modifier, a Boolean modifier, and then select this object as the cutting object. And it should be working properly, but it can be hard to tell because 
that object is in the way. So in that object, I'm going to go into my viewport display and just change it from textured to bounds. Uh, and we can see that the cut has properly been applied there. Now let's just adjust this position a little bit. I think that wants to come up to maybe around right there. And then maybe this piece actually comes down a tad. And I think that that's probably pretty close. Again, we're eyeballing things here. This isn't a one for one representation, but I think that that looks pretty good. Um, now to actually apply that Boolean modifier, it would be difficult to go back if we wanted to make any more adjustments. So I'm gonna take both these objects, Shift D and then M and move that to my trash collection, which of course, if we needed to get objects out of that collection, it would be far more useful than trash is, but let's go ahead now and apply Control A, the Boolean modifier, and then let's delete our cutting object. And just while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and move this down a little bit. Something about like that I think is accurate. Now with this one, let's go ahead and shade it smooth, turn on our auto smooth, and yeah, we're in good shape there. If you want to, you can just leave it like that, but um, similar to what we did here, it might be nice to have a little bit of a, a bevel on this. So let's go ahead and add in a bevel modifier. Now, when you do that, you might think bevel is not working. It is working, but there is an option down here in the geometry settings where a clamp overlap on, a clamp overlap is on, which will clamp the width to avoid overlap. So if we uncheck that, you can see that the kind of errors that we're getting here. So don't want that. And that is why the clamp overlap is usually a good thing. But um, when you have that on and the bevel is just not working, it can be hard to tell where the issue actually is. Um, but if we uncheck that and then just bring our kind of amount in and out, we can see where some of those intersections are happening. Um, and usually the result of that, the reason that's happening is because we have vertices that are just too close to each other. Um, so one thing I'll do first is just with everything selected, I'm going to right click and merge vertices by distance just to see if we can get rid of any doubles. And it looks like we did. I'm not sure exactly where those were, but that's good to get rid of those. Um, now for these little issues here, one way you can get rid of them is turning on this auto merge vertices option. And then we did a similar process in the headphone tutorial, but I'm just going to kind of move vertices that are close to each other. Um, I'm just going to merge them so that we don't have any of those bad overlapping problems. So let's just move these in. This is something that happens a lot with the um, bevel modifier, or sorry, when you do Booleans, you get, you get a lot of these types of issues. And there's a number of ways to fix them. And of course, you don't have to fix them, but um, I think I'm feeling pretty good about this. You can see these are really close. So just adjusting some vertices here. Now with this Boolean object, we probably didn't need to use a 32 vertex circle. Something like 24 might have given us less of those intersections, but that's feeling a little bit more cleaned up. I think that we can leave that at that. Let's just, let's see if we turn on our clamp overlap. Okay, so now even with the clamp overlap on, we're getting a little bit of bevel. Um, so I'll just leave it on. I think that's a perfectly fine bevel. Let's maybe add in an extra segment here. And then let's see if we add it in a subdivision surface. Yeah, that's just gonna smooth the whole thing out. So that's looking pretty good, I'm liking that. Now up here so that I can create a place where that light will go, I'm gonna press I to inset this and we'll just bring it into about right there and then I'll do Control R to add an edge loop and maybe pop that right around there. And then with all these selected, did a ring select there, Alt and click and that's gonna grab that whole edge ring. I'm gonna press E and Z and just bring this down a little bit. And this will be where I actually put that little LED light. Um, and while we're up here, we might as well go ahead and add that geometry. Let's, uh, with that still selected, Shift D, P to separate by selection. And then there it is. Let's just bring that up. And now would be a good time to, let's press F2 and rename that um, LED. Uh, we can name this um, Rotator. We can name this Shade. We can name this F2 column. We can name this F2 handle. Just a good idea to name things. Do we have it all named? Circle. Let's name that one base. Base. Okay. So we have our lamp coming together quite nicely here. Um, a couple more things to add would be this sort of column right here. Let's go ahead and add that in. Um, I can just duplicate this object. Let's do Shift D and then I'm going to go Y just to bring that over. And let's do the same thing we did before. Well, actually we can just scale it down 
until it's about the thickness we want, something like that. And then let's just, um, let's bring this up. And then I'm just gonna bring this section in a little bit. And even though you're not gonna see it, I'll bring that down a little bit. Yeah, I think that that is looking pretty good. Maybe we wanna go just a tad thicker, S, Shift, Z, bring that out. And then maybe let's move that in a little bit just so it's kind of more centered up with that object. And not that it's a huge deal here, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and snap my origin to geometry, which will just move the origin to the middle so it's not in like a weird place. Um, so that's all looking good. We've got pretty much all our parts, I believe here. Let's add in a little pin object, which will be where um, we, we, you're not really gonna see it. I mean, I guess you would if you were looking straight on, but um, just so that I can have a nice reference point to do my rotation from, I'm going to, um, let's just, let's snap our cursor to a nice convenient place, maybe right here. Shift S, cursor to selected, and then I'm gonna add in a circle. And for this one, I'm definitely gonna drop this because it doesn't need to be quite so detailed. Um, let's bring this in, scale it, rotate it, scale it again, and then, you know, why the heck not? Let's just do the solidify method, offset zero, bring that out. And now we have just our little tiny pin object. Let's put that right around there, maybe a little higher. I can't remember exactly where the lamp rotates from. What if we move that up just a tad, scale that circle down a tad, and then let's move our column up. I think something like that's good. There is a little gap there where a cord comes out. We're not gonna model the cord, but um, just so that when we're looking inside view, we have that gap, it's a little bit more accurate. Um, I think that's good. Let's uh, let's turn back on our overlay here. Um, we can actually, let's move our empty into our main collection and then so we can hide the box and stuff like that. Um, I want to add in that top part. Top part. I was gonna say portion and then I was gonna say part and it turned out like port. Anyways, <laughs> let's, uh, let's duplicate this object. Shift D, Z, bring that up to right around there and then tabbing into edit mode, I'm going to select that and just bring it down until it's about the right thickness. But there's actually a little notch detail at the top here. So I'm going to, let's see, let's inset this a little bit. I'd inset it just to kind of create that notch detail. And then back in my front view, I'm gonna do E and Z, just a tad, and then E and S to scale that out. And then E and Z again and then we're in good shape. We've got that little notch there. I think that's big enough. Should it be a little bit bigger? Maybe we move that down a tad and maybe we scale this inner portion in a little bit. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's just add a couple more bevel modifiers around here so that nothing's looking too sharp. Um, we can add one here, why not? Actually, let's not, you're not really gonna see that bevel, but let's add in one right here. So add modifier, bevel, and that is going to, you can see that because it has that clamp overlap on, it's gonna do it as small as it can, and that's the tightest area right there. So just for the sake of example, turning off the clamp overlap, that's what a bevel of one centimeter would actually look like. Uh, but we're gonna leave our clamp overlap on, and we'll bring this in until it is just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna have to like type in a value there. It's kind of tricky. That looks good, and then let's use the same bevel down here just in case we see it. So Control L, link modifiers, copy modifiers. Cool. Now the only place we'd see that bevel is sort of down here really, which let's F to fill that in so that we actually get a bevel and just set that right on top of our base. And then we can also add in a bevel modifier here just to round this out. Let's pull that down just a tad, and maybe with this one we add in a couple more segments and then add in a subdivision surface just to smooth that whole circle out a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think we are good. Where's our little pin piece? Let's find that. It's right there. So I wanna go ahead and start sort of rigging this and let's move our reference image back into the trash collection. So yeah, I wanna kinda of rig this whole thing so that I can rotate the lamp like you would in the real object. So um, with my cursor right there, Shift S, cursor to selected, so it's on my pivot point, I'm gonna add in an empty object. So Shift A, empty, and I like to use cubes. 
Um, we can bring the size in the viewport down a little bit. It just needs to be big enough that we can grab onto it, but I don't want it to be so huge that it's kind of getting in my way. So what needs to rotate? This will rotate, this will rotate, this piece will rotate, these two pieces will rotate. The pin, I guess, technically would rotate too, but we don't need to worry about that. Oh, and then let's make sure we get our little LED object there too. Um, so with all those objects selected, I'm going to select this empty last and then Control P, Parent, Object, Keep Transform. So now when I move this empty object, everything's going to move with it. And the way we're going to want to move it is just by rotating on the Y axis. So you can see we kind of have that rotation as intended working properly. Now there, you know, in real life, the lamp obviously can't rotate past this. So if you wanted to really make the model um, user friendly, you could add in some constraints that wouldn't allow you to rotate it past then. But I'm not too worried about that because we're going to do it manually. Uh, but one thing I might do is just go ahead and turn on the lock here for X and Z so we don't accidentally rotate it those ways, which if you do click up here and drag, it'll let you do it. But in the viewport, um, it will only allow you to rotate it that way. So now it's locked to only rotate on the Y axis. And the real lamp, I think, does a maximum of 90 in either direction. So you wouldn't want to animate past that. But, but hey, it's 3D. You can do whatever you want. I'm not here to stop you. So anyways, we've got this all set up. Lamp's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and shift control S to save our file. I'm going to name it lamp four, because this is the fourth iteration of the testing that I'm doing. But hopefully this one turns up as the actual tutorial. Um, let's go ahead and set up a little bit of a scene. I'm going to delete this lamp. And for my camera, I'm going to do alt G to bring that to the center, alt R. So it's looking straight down. And then I'll bring this up to 90 degrees and then move it out on the y-axis a little bit so that we're looking straight ahead. And let's go ahead and get our viewport set up in a way that's working a little bit better for materials, lighting, animation, things of that nature. So this is how I typically like to set up. I'm gonna press N and T, N and T to get rid of those. This will become a shader editor. So uh, I did the hockey S there. You pop up in that menu, hit S. It'll bring you to a shader editor, but you can just also click it right there and you have your shader editor. So what I want to do now is add in a little bit of a ground plane. So I'm going to press Shift C and then Shift A, add a mesh plane, tab into edit mode, scale it out. Um, and maybe we kind of make it like table shape, something like that. That looks good to me. Let's go ahead and move into our rendered view here. So I'm going to do rendered. And I'm rendering in cycles. You could, of course, work in EV if you want. But the way we're going to do the LED ring object is really going to work quite, or it's really only going to work the way I'm doing it in cycles. So uh, I would recommend working in cycles if your computer can handle it. But um, you can get some similar looks with EV. So let's go ahead and turn off our overlays here. Now, usually I like to light objects with just real physical lights, and we will do that. Um, so let's go ahead and add in an area light. But the reason I mentioned that is because we'll actually also use an HDRI here. So I'm just adding in this area light. This will just be a nice big bat one off to the side that we can kind of use to mimic like a you know light from a window or something like that. And let's go ahead and pull this up so that it's super, super powerful. Might need to type in like a, a number there. Okay, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and look through our camera view here. And let's move our camera up a little bit. So we can actually see our plane and then let's change our focal length. I usually like to use something like a 90. So we've got a little less perspective, but that will mean we need to pull this out a little bit. Okay. That's looking good. Maybe we come up a little bit with that object like in that, just kind of getting things framed. Um, now I also want a little bit of a backdrop. So let's press shift D and then rotate this so that we have a little bit of a wall behind there. Now in the side view, since these planes have zero thickness, uh, it's kind of hard to see them. So sometimes I'll actually add a solidify modifier just so I can actually like see the plane. Um, so let's, let's add that modifier here to control L copy modifiers. Cool. And I don't really want to see the front of this table. So actually, I guess we could see it, but let's just bring this down a little bit. Cool. So there's a little table object. I'm going to try on this even thickness because I hate that little thing that it does when it's not on. HDRI, we're doing lighting. 
We don't usually use HDRIs, but I haven't worked with one in a while and thought, why the heck not? So in my world settings, I'm going to press this little yellow dot and select environment texture, which will make your environment pink, which is Blender's way of saying, hey, we got no image. What do you want me to do? And what we want to do is add in an environment texture. So open and then just navigate to wherever you might have saved an HDRI. And I want to use this one called Wooden Lounge, I thought looked nice. So um, this is one I downloaded from Polyhaven. It's free. I'll put a link in the description, but yeah. Double click that and then boom, our lamp is in the Wooden Lounge. And you wanna make sure you're doing everything right because you are being monitored by CCTV. Just a little funny detail I saw in there, but that looks good. You know, we can turn the strength down on this a little bit if you didn't want the environment to be contributing so much light. But yeah, an HDRI is a, a really convenient and easy way to just go ahead and add a little bit more interesting lighting to your scene. You can see even with this area light off, you know, it looks kind of cool, it looks kind of nice. But yeah, let's leave it at that. Now, let's add some materials. So I'm gonna select first my lampshade and we're just gonna make the lamp black. So I'm gonna add a new material, call it black. Call it whatever you want and call it like main material or something. I'm gonna move that all the way down to black. The roughness, I might bump up a tad. I'm not positive exactly how rough the, the main one is, but yeah, something like a 0.6 will look probably pretty good. And so that I can see in the viewport what's actually gotten that material, I'm gonna just darken this a little bit. Oh, that's the darn. That's the world settings. I always, I always like mess with the world settings, then I mess with material settings, and I, and they have a lot of the same options. But you need to go down here and change viewport display to a darker color. Okay, so now I can just see that that material has that that object has that material. So let's just go around and select all the other ones. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Our pin object technically should get it too. And then lastly, select the one that has the material, Control L, Link Materials. Now they're all gonna get that material. Cool, so what do we want to do next? Well, let's go ahead and rotate this shade a little bit. And I wanna rotate the whole lamp actually a little bit too. So maybe we take, so this has all those parented. So then maybe we take, let's go ahead and parent our pin object, which let's add the black material. Let's parent our pin object to this one, control P, keep transform. And let's also, okay, so I wanna rotate everything. I wanna use kind of this base as a, as a way to move the lamp around. So let's do, so this object has all those ones. Let's do this object, this object, and then lastly select the base, control P, object, keep transform. So now I can use the base to rotate my lamp around. And the reason I wanted to do that was to show that the underside is black, but we want it to be a sort of reflective white material. And the way I'm gonna do that is by adding a new slot here. So pressing that plus sign, and we'll name that white. And then I will just make it a nice bright white and bring the roughness up a little bit so it's not too reflective, but so that we can see what's actually happening. Um, normally you would go in and like select the faces and apply them. But if you recall, those interior faces are be, being created with the solidify modifier. So if you try to apply the material to one of these faces, can apply it to the inside and the outside. But in the solidify modifier, in this materials dropdown, there's a way to change the offset. So if we just click one there, it's going to know to look for the next material in the list. So you can see we've got black and then white. So in the solidify modifier, just this materials option is just saying, hey, you know, take whatever material it has, but look for the next slot. So that's the easiest way to kind of create that white material, or sorry, to control where that white material appears. Now, the last thing we need to set up is our little LED object. So let's add a new material and call it LED. And we want this to be an emissive material. So I'm gonna press X, delete my principal shader, Shift A, add in a shader, emission shader. Drop that on there. And then let's um, let's turn our HDRI down real low. And we could even turn off our area light. Okay, so now we're in a totally dark scene. Um, so you can bring the strength up on this and you can see that it's working properly. 
Um, and the next thing you'd want to do is maybe make the color of this a little bit more warm. And the fastest, easiest way to do that is just to like kind of guess right there, something like that. But if you really want to be accurate, you can add in a converter black body, which will actually allow you to put in a color temperature and it will convert it to a, a color. So on the website for the pendulum lamp, you can actually see that Mate has listed out the temperature of the, the LED that's in there and it's 2700K, which is a warm white. So now we can see, um, similar to what it was when we just kind of guessed at it, but now we know that's actually accurate. So bring the strength up to kind of whatever you want, keeping in mind that we are gonna have a area light in here, as well as we'll have a little bit of light coming from our HDRI. But yeah, that looks pretty accurate. You know, let's say we wanted to, let's say we wanted to like see that light kind of on the wall. I'm going to, um, let's do 90 degrees and then we can rotate this back around the other way, 270. And let's like maybe move our wall forward a little bit. And I do want to have this gap in the back. So let's move that. Just having that little kind of gap there creates this nice sort of shadow, which I enjoy. Um, so now you can kind of see the, I might have to crank up the power even more, but you can kind of see that warm glow coming from the light. Just kind of a cool detail if that was a render you were thinking about doing. Um, so yeah, this is looking good. I don't want to see that through there though. So let's see what what is causing that. Let's kind of get in there. Okay, so it looks like our this piece will need to be touching because right there it's kind of allowing light to creep in, but I don't want that. So I'm gonna just move it so that it's kind of going, at least touching it, maybe going through it a little bit so that we don't have any leaking light. Um, but that looks pretty good. Let's add in some more details. I think we've got all the material set up. The light is working. We've got our scene kind of set up. Let's just add a little bit of uh, pendulum lamp inspired art behind it and I'm definitely leaning into the renders that Matei did where he had sort of this kind of geometric um, design in the background and I thought of a cool way to kind of create a similar sort of mid-century inspired artwork behind there so um, pressing shift a adding in a plane um, tabbing to edit mode I'm gonna do rx90 to flip it up on its side and then let's bring this back a little bit just so it's kind of sitting on our wall gz just kind of want it centered behind the lamp. Let's tab in edit mode, scale it out a little bit. And I think I want my renders to be square as well. So let's um, let's change our render settings, something like a 1500 by 1500. Should be pretty good. And then let's maybe bring our light in, or sorry, our camera in a little bit. Something like that I think looks good. Now for our little piece of artwork, we're just gonna use a couple clever modifiers. The first of which would be a solidify modifier so that this has some thickness against our wall. I think that looks good. And then I'm just gonna create sort of these sections and add some sort of curve details to a few of them. This is a very trendy like looking type of artwork now, but not gonna lie, I like it. Um, so you could add in some edge loops or just right click and subdivide. Um, but I think if I subdivide, it's gonna do even numbers and I want three. So just adding in some edge loops there, scrolling up to add edge loops. And then uh, in my, I think I want to be in my face select mode when I do this. If I press control B and bevel, it's going to create sort of this grid. You know, it's going to add in some, some loops around those points. So something like that. And then just press X and delete faces. So now we have sort of this grid pattern. And then to make it a little more trendy, a little more mid-century, I'm going to add in a bevel modifier. Um, but I actually want that to go before the solidify and I want it to affect the vertices so that it's doing that. Um, now I want these to be pretty round. So just kind of cranking up the segments there, something like that. And that design is cool as is, but if you wanted to, you know, maybe maintain some of those corners, I can change this from an angle limit method to a weight limit method, which will allow me to then go in and decide where I want the um, curves to be. So Let's just select maybe those top corners, these top corners, um, maybe these bottom corners. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. Let's add in. Okay, so then, you know, with the weight method, then we need to drag up the bevel weight. So now we kind of have that happening. 
and um, it's looking a little bit lame right now. Where else can we add in? Let's add in some bevel there. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Very trendy. Very nice. Pull that up. Maybe we make the uh, the bevel even bigger. All right. I'm digging that. I think it looks cool. You know, do whatever you want. Play around. This is just for fun. And you could add in another bevel modifier just to kind of give those a little bit of smoothness. Something like that. Looks pretty good. And we could shade that smooth and turn on our auto smooth. Now this is just a background element, so you don't necessarily need to add more segments there, but you could if you wanted to. But yeah, I'm liking that. Let's just do maybe a small little animation. Um, I'm going to do Control B to add a render board or two so that my computer isn't trying to render things outside the view. Um, let's just kind of get this framed how we like. I'm sort of starting to think of kind of a little story here, like maybe uh, maybe we start off and we see this sort of nice sculptural object and then it rotates and we can see that it's a lamp. What an amazing story that would be. Let's tell the story with animation. First thing I want to do is change my frame rate to 30 frames per second. Since that's how I like to work, um, now would also be a good time to go ahead and press Control S to save in case things crash. Uh, Blender doesn't crash a ton, but when it does, uh, the autosave feature is really, really good. I've never lost that much work, but still a good idea to save as much as you can. Um, so yeah, for that animation, maybe across the whole animation. Okay, so we wanted to say it starts looking straight ahead and then maybe about one second in the whole thing rotates like that to reveal the lamp. Um, okay, so at 30 frames, one second, we want it to be where it is now, 90 degrees, and then maybe over the course of, let's have our whole animation be six seconds long. So six times 30 is 180 frames. So maybe slowly over the course of, so by about frame 120, I'm thinking I want the lamp to be looking that way. And then we, let's go ahead and right click, insert single keyframe. And then I also want to sort of rotate this at a, a little bit more of an interesting angle. Maybe something like that would look good, or maybe that, who knows, do whatever you want. But, um, you know, realistically, the whole lamp wouldn't rotate, but because this is just a circle, we're really not going to be able to tell. Realistically, I think it would pivot up here somewhere, but we're going to do it down on the base and nobody's going to know. So maybe when it starts to, so we'll have it be right there at that point. And then by frame 120, when it sort of settles into place, we'll have it rotated something like that, I think. That looks good. Kind of lines up with our direction of our background there. So let's go ahead and let's just play that animation, see what that looks like. So it starts right there, kind of pivots around, and then boom, done. Um, now so that we have a little bit of motion throughout the whole animation, let's add in some animation to our camera here. So maybe have the camera start back a little bit, maybe in a little bit. We'll just, we're just going to be pretty subtle here, so maybe we have it rotate, maybe we have it go in. So let's start back somewhere like that, insert single keyframe, and then by the end, let's have it in a little bit. Something like that, insert single keyframe. Now in my graph editor up here, I'm going to change that to a linear animation, so this is a constant motion. So pressing T to bring up that menu that I just did. And boom, just like that. Now, you know, because this is like a counterbalance thing, I'm kind of imagining that maybe when you, maybe when you like tap it, it kind of like starts off fast and then slow, slows down as it sort of settles into its balanced position. So to do that, I'm just going to edit this graph a little bit so that it kind of has a little bit more acceleration at the front. So it kind of gets popped, popped. And maybe that's a little bit too extreme of a pop. Something like that. What a nice little animation of the beautiful pendulum lamp by Mate Stefanatz. I'm, I'm trying my hardest to pronounce that. He sent it to me, but uh, I, I, can't, I can't get it quite exactly right. Or it doesn't feel right. But anyways, I hope you all are enjoying the lamp, wherever you are with it, I'm sure your lamp is looking fantastic. Definitely check out the Pendulum Lamp online. I think pre-order is open if you're interested. 
there is no business affiliation between me and Mate, but um, but I think it's a really cool lamp design. I might order one myself. And yeah, so share online with with us what you come up with. Definitely check out Mate's work. It's really cool. But yeah, also you know like and subscribe, thumbs up, do all those things. Leave some comments. Um, share you know share on Instagram or Twitter or Reddit wherever you like to share things. Whatever you came up with. Would love to see them. So, yeah, thanks anyways for following along. Hope things are going well for you. And uh, see you later. Like and subscribe. Peace.